Yo, yo, what the fuck is up, everybody? Um, this video right here, I know I've been MIA a little bit, took a break. Um, it's great to take breaks from business, but also you come back stronger, more motivated, and ready to go. So, the name of the game is Consistency. I kind of laid off a little bit, just fixing my back end, and kind of, um, yeah, just trying to refocus, realign with my beliefs, and, and now I'm just ready to go for the next six months. So, on my end, it's normal, right? When you've been grinding, I've been grinding for like the past two years of doing this. So uh, much needed rest, much needed break to kind of realign with my values when kind of um, stuff was breaking on my end with the infrastructure. So in turn, chose to kind of taper off, see what needs to be improved, and then um, step back in into the role of just leading my team, leading the forefront so that we can hit our target, right? 50K a month, that's my goal and that's my plan. So. Um, with any plan of action, right, you need to have the right focus, you need to be engaged, and you need to be ready to give it your all. And first things first, just just never quit. So with that being said, how is this going to tie into this piece of content? It's not. <laughs> that was just an intro. But what I want to cover today is more so having perceived value. If we go into any industry, there's a reason why people drive luxury cars. There's a reason why people spend over 100 k in two cars. There's a reason why people even spend a million dollars on two cars, right? When they could have just easily bought a Kia or, or a cheap car, probably around two to three Ks, drive them A to B, right? There's a reason. As well as on the other side of the spectrum, there's a reason why people buy designer stuff, designer clothes, designer shoes. And even though it might not seem as valuable or might not provide as much utility as possible, they still buy it anyway. So there's some deep thinking you have to do and study human psychology. The reason why we do certain efforts is either to promote our status in society amongst everybody else, right? We, we want to increase our status, increase our wealth, increase, um, and this just plays into the fact that this moves us up on the level of hierarchy in terms of society, right? The biggest differentiating thing between somebody who's poor and somebody who's wealthy is simply their money. Right, even though we don't, you shouldn't really value money. The concept is money. We use money to separate A players from the B players, from the the C players, right? And there's nothing you can really do. This is just a, a societal norm since the ages of time, right? Because whether it wasn't money as a current currency on paper, there's still gold. People were trading gold. So there's something valuable as hu in human nature, and we try to acquire that value. To put us up higher than everybody else, right? This is just a system. Unless you go and you're a monk and you make a ton of money and you just give it all back, and you're just on a higher being, you're on a higher state uh, status, then you're just you're not normal. You're a different human being. You're in line, and you seem like uh, it just you, you kind of step out of the the methods and the frameworks, right? But I want to tie into this is the market, right? If you're in business. You're always competing against some other business, right? You're, you're competing with somebody else who has either a similar product or if not even a better product than you, right? So I want to tie that into the main theme of this video, what separates like a Louis Vuitton from like a van shoe, right? Why is a company charging over 1K for a pair of shoes and the other brand is charging only $50? Why are people buying $1,000 in shoes compared to everybody can just own vans, right? People are literally spending $1,000 on a pair of shoes, just a pair of shoes. And to be honest, I mean, they are probably cost maybe $100 to make these shoes. So I know like even women buy or they spend over three to five K in purses or a bag that literally costs a couple hundred to make, right? The answer to this, as mentioned at the beginning of this video, perceived value. Right, when you buy a product from Louis Vuitton, you're not buying the ut utility of the actual product, but because anyone can find a decent a decent bag at a decent price, right? You're simply buying the status the brand gives you in society, right? As I, t I touched on this a little bit, why do millionaires spend um, uh, their millions on a car? A car that they can go and just buy a Kia, get to a point A, point B. Well, when you pull up in a Bugatti, that gives you status over everyone else because it's so limited not a lot of people have it. And like I said, human nature, we want to put ourselves higher in the in societal norms so that we can either stand out 
we have the wealth to display that we have the wealth, right? We're winning in this game. And then also from a male's perspective, right? You're attracting the other, the other uh, gender. You're, you're attracting females when you pull up with a lot of, of value, right? Perceived like the high value person. So when it comes to running a successful seven figure econ biz, compared to like a six figure econ biz, is simply all just perceived value. So here's a couple ways you can follow in order to increase the perceived value of your brand, right? So you got to think about it. We can't just go into the market and create shoes and, and sell it for $500 because we don't have any establishment. We don't have any authority. Our brand hasn't been around that long, right? Especially if you're starting up an e-com. You got to play the long game here. So a brand compared to like, let's say a Gucci, a Gucci has been around for, for years, for ages. Everybody know what Gucci is. Everybody know what Louis. Everybody knows what Louis Vuitton is. Everybody knows what all these designer brands are. They've been around Versace, right? Well, when it comes to knowing your brand, your brand's probably been up and running probably for only two to three years if you're lucky. If you have a store, a brick and mortar store, probably what five years? Even then, it's like difficult to to sustain that because you have different markets that kind of crash. You got clients that kind of filter out, customers that kind of leave, and cause brands to fail. But more so, these high high designer brands have always been there forever, right? So, here's what you can do in the e-com space. You can separate yourself by getting repeat buyers to continually purchase on a subscription model. Because let's say your product does provide some sort of utility. You can provide, you can either charge higher ticket by providing a luxury experience. This can be super difficult, but it can be done. And you kind of you put, you have a unique selling point to it. Like I've seen a client sell shoes for over 200 plus dollars and it's mainly because of the Italian leather that goes into the craft of the shoe, right? They don't follow traditional manufacturing. It's really hand handcrafted, hand tailored by one person and they take their time to the piece, right? So you're providing a luxury, hence why you can charge a premium for it. That's another aspect of it. Or even the next step would be, and I suggest doing this, is offering verticals to increase average order value in your niche, right? When it comes to offering verticals this is something i'm going to talk to with my client as well that i have on board why would people want the goal is like people have problems if you're in a specific niche right people have multiple problems in that specific niche so for example let's say if somebody's struggling to, to lose weight right why not offer a protein supplement to, to help them lose weight to aid them in their journey maybe introduce some sort of snacks or some sort of framework like on top of let's say you have the protein um, the protein supplement pack they take, why not just a A to Z like food basis um, meal plan or meal prep, right? Where you like you ship out these specific, let's say snacks or something like that to help them along the lines. Even then, you can go a step further. Why not introduce a whole course A to Z that can show them how to lose weight while taking your 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 products and then following workout to stick to it. So it's like you're eliminating all these problems with your brand. So then it makes it unreasonable for them to go to a different company, right? That's one way of doing it as well. And this is this also increases your average order value in, in the space. But a lot of people don't know about these brands because they don't have any authority simply because they don't they're not leveraging attention. So I'm gonna cover this one right here first. I'll do I'll do piece by piece. So repeat buyers, uh, actually. I'm going to cover, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll cover uh, a bit and then just go on a spill here. But repeat buyers by creating a product that is on a subscription model. This is probably the easiest model to follow to scale on an econ brand, right? Pick any niche, offer utility, bring conviction in a way that provides um, uniqueness to the market. Because you're not only competing with products that are sold online, but also you're competing with products in retail stores. So why would somebody want to buy your product and not just get a similar one at a retail store down the street and they were in a city they live in? without waiting on shipping, right? Because most people ship, it probably takes them seven to 10 days, right? Compared to, let's say they buy it on Amazon, they get it in one day. So you're competing with a lot of factors, but still people are able to scale an e-com brand because they offer a unique selling point that can't be found on, on Amazon or can't be found on uh, in retail stores. For example, like a keto friendly product, vegan friendly product. I mean, you can't find vegan options at like uh, Whole Foods, but 
you have to create some sort of utility with it. Organic, that's really, it's not difficult to find organic stuff. I mean, you like I said, you go to a grocery store or whatever. Uh, gluten-free. Like, let's say if you have gluten-free, uh, keto-friendly, right, for a specific demographic that is fitness supplements. There's not a lot of companies that do keto-friendly, gluten-free supplements, right? That's one angle to it. So it's like you have unique uniqueness, unique selling points in a, in a niche that's not known for offering that, and then you have, like, utility involved. And then you get those people on a subscription model. Let's say you automatically, like, they opt into it. And then have it to where, like, they don't really focus on, like, they know every three months they're going to get a shipment in. All right? And then you eliminate the stress of somebody then constantly putting in their card every three months, right? Because then when when you have somebody that pays, like, takes out their card and then pays it, subconsciously they're second-guessing why would I even purchase this? Why should I? Why should I make a purchase if it's not affecting my life, right? So you you want to make sure it's like automated in a way that like they opt in for the first time. That's it, and then they choose the option to like, okay, I would like these every ninety days, and they don't have to worry about it. They just know it gets shipped, and they don't have to t do a thing, right? So that's one aspect of it, providing luxury experience while charging a premium. So when it comes to like clothing or apparel, you have traditional fashion. You can buy at like your local H&M store or you have like high fashion designer stuff. So I've seen, like I said, e-com brands that sell footwear for a $200 product and, and more in the quality. And the angle is, like I said, handmade in by someone in Italy, right? So the best way to sell somewhat higher ticket products in the e-com space is simply by providing a luxury. And I'm gonna include this in here. You need to create a brand with content. And this goes for a coach, consultant, any brand owner. The reason why we purchase stuff is because we could, we see these at well, designer stores. You don't really see their ads, but you know they're they're magazines. They they have their own uh, photo photo books. So then, when you do create a brand, you you have to leverage what you have. You have social media platforms. You have TikTok. You have Instagram. You have YouTube Shorts. You have all these platforms to build your own brand, make yourself stand out from everybody else in the competition, right? Secondly. The quality manufacturing process has to be furthermore from none, right? People are willing to give you their hard-earned cash because they're buying from your brand that is different from the entire competition out there, right? When we see the early stages, or when you are in the early stages, study the greats, implement the infrastructure they've used. Study Gucci, Louis Vuitton, Rolex, etc. These higher brands, see what they did differently because surely they, they were in competition with other brands before, but they stood the test of time because they have a blueprint. So everything has a blueprint. You just got to study what has, done, has been done already before. And now speaking with a prospect last week, we we're discussing the, discussing the points of creating an offer irresistible to get people to opt in, right? Especially with a higher ticket. You can even implement like a buy one, get one free for the first purchase. It's still a great concept to get people at the door. But once you have people in, build on verticals in order for them to continuously buy from you and your brand, right? Here's an example. If you're in a pet space, pet space and selling dog treats, go after the next problem dog owners face. Dogs get dirty create allergy free web uh, wipes or even like urine odor remover right create so many verticals that it's like it just solves every single problem in the space and you just become like a, you're owning a monopoly basically so similar to what Amazon does when it comes to I want to say they were started off as a bookstore what they do well they fix they, they went online when they went online well they started start, uh, selling more products from there when in the online space Every customer was complaining about shipping times. So what did Bezos do? Built the whole infrastructure to get fat one day shipping. And then from there he has a subscription model, Amazon Prime, that constantly bills people to get faster shipping, a great customer experience, and literally they don't have to like they purchase something, they get it next the next day. Right? You don't have to worry about issues with customer support because Amazon's gonna take care of you. They want you on their platform. And then ultimately, there's nobody else competing with Amazon right now, right? So you just have to think ahead of the game. There's Everything has been done before. You just have to study the right blueprint. And then I want to go back to, I'm pretty much covered everything here, right? Repeat buyers provide luxury or offer verticals to increase AOV. But at the end of the day, it all comes down to perceived value, right? Because everybody in, the, in in society wants to feel valued, they want to stand out from everybody else. Study human nature when it comes to psychology of anything when you do launch a business. Because I can tell you right now, not every brand is going to survive, but the brands that do survive either provide utility or they offer a ton of verticals. 
So I'm like, I'm tired of people creating general stores when those don't work. But if you create multiple products that solve all the verticals in a specific niche, that makes sense. Right? If you're selling dog snacks, then you can frame your brand as like, or dog treats. Then you're more so on the lines of training a dog. So then when it comes to training a dog, well, you know that they have to be potty trained. Okay? Then you release like the odor. You can package it together as a bundle. That'd be great. Or even dog wipes. Right? And then you can go a step further. There's a lot of angles you can play it into. But why not just be the brand that people go to? Instead of them buying from your brand one product, they kind of leave you away. And then they go shop at a, at a different store that offers a different product that you could have easily implemented. Right? So this is what's great about entrepreneurship. You always have to be innovating. But um, that's my two cents on what it means to provide perceived value. Especially when it's charge hard ticket. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. But uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed this piece of content.